Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we will discuss something super important if you are working with multiple Azure subscriptions. This is about Azure management groups. So let's break it down in a way that's easy to understand and show you how to organize your Azure environments like a pro. My name is Navneet Kumar and I'm a Microsoft certified trainer. The learning objectives of this video will be we will first understand what are the Azure management groups, then why shall we care about them, how they work, tips and best practices. Finally, I will provide you a demonstration on creating and managing the Azure management groups to organize the subscriptions and resources. So without any further ado, let's get started. The first thing first, first we need to understand what exactly Azure management groups are. You can think of them as the folders that help you organize the subscriptions. These are the top level containers to manage or organize the subscriptions. As I said in the introduction, if you are working in an organization which has multiple subscriptions to work with, then the Azure management groups come into the picture. If you are working for a large organization for managing multiple environments like a dev, test, prod or the organization has multiple business units or due to the separations of duty of different departments, we need to segregate these subscriptions to assign the separate policies or access control or for the governance reason, then this is the solution for managing these subscriptions and the governance. Well, why shall we care about them? These management groups offer uh, several advantages like centralized management. We can apply the policies or we can manage the access control for these uh, multiple subscriptions through the management groups. RBAC we can do at a scale when we have to delegate the access control to multiple subscriptions then we can do it through the management groups just like you create the folders to organize your files and then you delegate the access on the folders to users or groups then those users can access those folders and all subfolders and files within them that's the same thing we achieve over here we do the policy inheritance so we can put some generic policies that are applicable to all the sub management groups or the subscriptions on the top most uh, container on the management group Next is consistency. We can keep the environments consistent and compliant without doing the same thing again and again. If I talk about how the management groups work, so the topmost management group that we have is the root group. We can rename that also. For example, this is Contoso root group or tenant root group. We can keep it. And uh, as the term suggests, tenant root group, so this is associated with your entra ID, which means that this entire hierarchy is dependent on that entra tenant. You cannot have the management uh, groups across the uh, two different entra tenants. Uh, the top level management group can have sub management groups then. So after the tenant root group, we can create the uh, management groups like marketing, IT or the sales, research, different uh, uh, sub management groups we can create and this hierarchy can be six level deep that excludes this root group tenant root group we do not count into that all the subscriptions associated on your tenant come to the root group by default and then you can move them across these management groups or sub management groups to manage them well, let's have a look into the demonstration that how do we use these Azure management groups. To manage the Azure management groups, you have to go to the management groups. You can search for that from this uh, free search in the center of the Azure portal and go to the management groups where you will see the management groups here. This is the tenant root group at the top. Then based on my business units in my company or I have multiple uh, department so however i want to do this uh, um, bifurcation i can do it accordingly for an instance 
under the tenant root group there are two subscriptions if you look at this total subscriptions and this is the tenant this is my entra id actually uh, where this is associated then uh, there are two sub management groups like cloud 360 and skillsify as you see over here if i want to create any other sub management group i can go to this uh, create button over here then i can provide an id over here and this is let's say uh, 0003 and the management group that i want to create is let's say uh, farm delights and then i submit this request in this way i can create the sub management groups under the tenant root group for my different business units and under that then i can further bifurcate and create more sub management groups under each of these for an instance i can go to the cloud 360 and then i can create sub management groups over here for an instance this is uh, the first sub management group i'm creating under this and this is for it and then i submit this request this is how i can create the sub management group so this can be six level in depth excluding that top level management group the tenant root group so this is the two level hierarchy if i look at this cloud 360 is the first level and then the it that i created is the second level and uh, at the first level i have these three sub management groups in this manner i can have up to 10000 management groups so at a scale i can have a lot of management groups if you have a question about the number of subscriptions i can have that there is no limit that number of subscriptions a tenant or a customer can have so there is no such restriction well when it comes to manage these uh, management groups and their subscriptions so we can choose a particular subscription for an instance this msdn platform i want to move it to some other uh, management group so i can click on move and then choose the target management group where i want to move it just be cautious about this warning that moving the subscriptions from one management group to another management group will inherit the permissions from that target one it's like moving a file from one folder to other folder and all the ntfs permissions of the target folder are up applied and from the source folder where from you have moved it so those uh, permissions will be lost so this can result into the access control issues so as a best practice you should start with the management groups in your journey in the beginning if you are going to manage multiple subscriptions so this is the uh, cloud 360 one of my sub management group under the tenant root group so this is the first level then this is the second level and in fact i'm not limited to this like i said that we can have six level of depth so i can further create the sub management groups inside it well this is how i can manage these uh, uh, management groups and uh, i can add the subscriptions i can move the subscriptions between these uh, management groups inside the azure this is the settings where from I can see that default management group uh, for new subscriptions will be this one. This is my tenant ID, Entra tenant. And uh, if you look at this uh, Entra ID of mine, so this is the tenant ID that is ending with that DB0. And here you see that DB0 is ending. Uh, this is my tenant ID. So that was the tenant root group. Coming back to the management groups. So let's talk about some... Uh, best practices some tips about that number one is start using the management groups early in your as your journey as i mentioned earlier design a hierarchy that mirrors your organization's structure apply the rbac and policies at the higher level to reduce the repetition so that's a uh, good point where we have some generic policies or if the multiple subscriptions can share those policies or delegation of control so then we should do it at the top level so that we need not to repeat it and in fact we will get uh, better consistency in that manner finally don't forget the tenant root group is there by default and you just need to take ownership of it and uh, you cannot delete this tenant root group because if the tenant root group is deleted of course so this can bring a huge cost to your business so this is uh, being protected you can't delete it but yes if required you can rename that so for an instance uh, you have seen in the uh, one of the diagram i shown you earlier that this root group itself was renamed as contoso root group ideally if the organizations have multiple business units so they don't do it uh, uh, the rename of this management group tenant root group so they leave it as it is and then they create the management group for all their different business units separately 
so they leave it intact but yes you have the choice in case you want to rename this tenant root group so you see the delete button is grayed out but yes rename option is there that you can rename this management group with your organization's name well this is about the management groups how do we deal with them in azure i hope this was informative to you thanks for watching and if you have not subscribed to the channel yet please do subscribe it for future videos thank you